Hello and welcome back to the FPL Tom YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to cover my game week six team selection. We're going to go through my captaincy. We're going to go through the team as a whole. We're going to go through my transfer targets for the upcoming game week as well. If you do enjoy the content that you see on the channel, please like, comment and subscribe as we are trying to reach 750 subs by the end of September. Big goal again, but I do believe we can absolutely smash it. So thank you for your continued support on the channel. But yeah, that's kind of enough waffle from me. Let's get into the team selection for this game week. Starting us off in goal, we've got Dean Henderson from Nottingham Forest. And yeah, I'm really happy with that. He's going to be the player that I'm going to transfer in this week. For the past few game weeks, I have had the Leicester double up and it's just been dreadful. I am filming this before the United game, so who knows? Leicester could have kept a clean sheet, but it's just not good, is it? It's just been awful. One point as every single week from Danny Ward. No save points, no bonuses. Absolutely dreadful i've gone with henderson purely down to the fact that the fixtures are amazing till around uh game week 12 really um i'm looking at him till around game week nine when i'm going to wild card but up until that point they've got bournemouth leeds and fulham and then after that leicester aston villa wolves and brighton and hove albion is definitely worth taking a look at potentially a few forest players i know a lot of people already have williams but Maybe if you are like me and you need a goalkeeper till your next wild card, Henderson could be the short term solution. That is my transfer plan at the moment to bring Henderson in. He is currently the highest scoring goalkeeper within FPL, and that is mainly down to the fact of two penalty saves. So I'm not expecting massive returns from him, but with the expected data kind of model he is predicted to be the highest scoring goalkeeper over the next five game weeks so that was very interesting to see obviously Borman fixture coming up as well in game week six very very attractive I do like this move I think it's the kind of the last little piece I need for my team to look really really strong the goalkeeper position has been letting me down and I've been kind of losing quite a few points on it for the past few game weeks and I think Dean Henderson is the right addition to my side First player in the defence, of course, is going to be this man. It is Trent Alexander-Arnold, very much a staple of everyone's FPL team. Obviously, Liverpool not having the greatest start to the season. Obviously, very fortunate last night to kind of get a win out of the Newcastle game. 98th minute, definitely some bribing going off there. Um, but Everton away, very, very nice fixture for Liverpool. I do expect them to keep a clean sheet. They have a very, very good record against Everton. So looking forward to that one. Hopefully Trent can keep a clean sheet and maybe get himself an attack in return. Moving on to the next defender, we've got Rhys James at home against West Ham. Obviously missed the last game against Southampton due to illness. If I get the all clear from kind of uh, Tuchel that he's going to be fit, He's going to stay. He's going to start. Saw that he was in a training video that they released the other day as well. So it does look like he is back into training. Kind of should be there for the game as well. Bit concerning him playing at right centre back. But hopefully with the additions of like Fafana. Hopefully we're going to see him pushed a little bit further forward into that right wing back spot. Chelsea haven't been amazing at the back either so far this season. Obviously that defeat to Southampton in the week. Another one for them. It's been... It's been a little bit embarrassing, hasn't it? Leeds, Southampton over the past few game weeks. So they will be looking to bounce back. West Ham obviously pulling off a draw against Spurs last night as well. So West Ham kind of coming back and in, back into it. But they do have Europa League. Uh, no, Europa Conference League. Uh, pardon me. West Ham, you're not that good uh, to think about. So obviously there might be a little bit of rotation within their side. Moving on to the next defender is Lewis Dunk. Don't worry, I didn't bring in Dunk last week um, for his own goal. I've had him for a few weeks and I've been very happy with his performances and the Brighton defence and the points that he's been scoring. And then he kind of just went and chucked all that up in the air, didn't he? Just a bit of a dick. Uh, basically scoring that own goal. Got me minus one last week, but I'm hoping there's kind of a, a resume to normality for Brighton. Probably the worst, worst performance of the season so far. So hopefully against a bottom club at the moment, Leicester, they can get themselves a clean sheet. Lewis Dunk could get himself back in the points as well. That would be very nice from him. Moving on to our final defender, it is Jao Cancelo off the back of kind of a, a 17-pointer I think he got last night. Obviously that wonderful, wonderful goal. That's only his, ever, his second ever Premier League goal as well, which is absolutely like unreal considering he had the most shots among defenders last season. I am a little bit concerned. Maybe there might be some rotation ahead at the week 
weekend. Obviously, City have a huge Champions League game against Sevilla coming up. So we'll have to kind of see how that one pans out if we do get any early team news. I doubt it. But I do expect Jao Cancelo to play. And I think my bench is okay enough to kind of handle whatever is thrown at it. But that's the defence. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. But let's move on to the midfield within this side. Moving into the midfield, we start with Gabriel Martinelli off the back of another amazing performance from him. Goal should have potentially had a, an assist as well as Saka did miss a big opportunity. Very happy that I made the switch from Saka down to Martinelli. He has freed up a lot of money to make my team a lot better and he looks the better of the two players. A little bit of concern for me with Arsenal players for this upcoming game week. Manchester United, yes, haven't had the best start of the season, but that Odegaard injury that he kind of picked up, hopefully it's nothing serious and he's fit for the weekend, but... He's been kind of at the heart of a lot of things, a lot of the good things that Arsenal have been doing. And I think if he's injured, I am a little bit worried about how they'll perform in terms of attacking output. So it will be very interesting to see how that one kind of goes about. I think that'll be a really, really, really tight game. Very interesting. Can Arsenal make it six unbeaten? I mean, that Odegaard injury definitely swings kind of the favour back into Manchester United's court as well. An away game for Arsenal. So I'm a little bit concerned. But... Arsenal 5 unbeaten, who knows what could happen, and I think Martinelli is probably one of the best Arsenal assets that you could own. If you had an Arsenal defender for this week, I'd maybe consider a sell-in. Looks like Ramsdale's potentially picked up an injury as well. Just have to wait what Arteta kind of says on that one. So if you've got Ramsdale, it might be worth Maybe if you've got a, a goalkeeper on your bench, bringing him in for this week, or maybe looking to make the transfer as Arsenal's fixtures kind of fall off a little bit after kind of game week nine. So if that is the plan, then maybe look at that. Moving on to the mid, uh, the next midfielder, sorry. We've got Mohamed Salah against Everton away. Uh, last season scored two goals at Goodison. Loves it against Everton, as do Liverpool. Uh, the Blues never, ever seem to be at uh, Liverpool, sorry. So it's always kind of a safe pick going for Salah. Obviously, last night got himself two assists and two bonus points in the end. Very scummy from that man. Um, but yeah, again, another top captaincy pick for this game week as well. I think he's the third highest player on projected points as well. So it wouldn't be a bad pick. But Everton, Liverpool is the early kickoff and we we just can't go against Gandhi, can we? The man speaks absolute logic. You cannot back the early kickoff. So I'm very cautious with the Salah pick at the moment. He's kind of number two for captaincy so far in my team, but he definitely could end up with the armband come the weekend. Moving on to the final midfielder, it is Jack Harrison. Brought him in last week as obviously Leeds fixtures kind of turned very nice. Um, and I was very disappointed with his performance, to be honest. Really poor crosses from him. Lost the ball more than any other player on the pitch, and it was an amazing performance from Leeds either. Obviously, the Rodrigo injury as well is really going to, I think, impacts the other players around them their attacking numbers so i am a little bit concerned with jack harrison brentford not a bad team either but kind of having a little bit of a mixed start i definitely think there is goals in that game is whether or not jack harrison will be involved he might even get dropped because it was a pretty dismal performance from him in the week so we'll kind of have to see how that one plays he is potentially another player that may be coming out of the team in the next few game weeks coming up before the game week will game week nine wild card we'll just see how he gets on in the next few but yeah that's the midfield Mohamed Salah provisional captain at the moment maybe um but yeah let me know what you think of the midfield and let me know kind of which way your thoughts are going with Salah captain but let's move on to my front line starting us off in the front line it is Erling Haaland the man is an absolute beast back-to-back -back hat tricks could he make it a triple this weekend maybe there is big question marks about his kind of expected minutes that he's going to play this weekend obviously they do have champions league next week manchester city where they take on severe on tuesday night so that's going to be city's priority it always is the champions league and i think they'll want their best team kind of 
fit and ready. And Haaland did play quite a lot of the game in the week. So I am a little bit concerned that he might not start, may start on the bench. And they might go Julian Alvarez or potentially a false nine with KDB kind of leading the night the line for the Aston Villa game but if he does start I'm very confident that he's going to get on the score sheet very very confident indeed highest projected points for this game week as well so he is kind of another contender for me for like the captaincy we'll have to kind of see what Pep says about whether or not he's going to play but he'd be the first player ever in Premier League history to get a uh, triple hat tricks which would honestly be absolutely amazing villa as well steven jared under a lot of pressure at the moment as well not looking good so i definitely think if harlan's gonna start and we kind of get an indication that he's gonna start i mean it is pep so we're not gonna get that indication then i would definitely potentially look to captain him again this week very happy with him so far i think if you haven't got him in your team You've just got to. I think even if he's not playing full games, he's still going to get himself on the score sheet because he's just that good. And Manchester City, pretty much inevitable, the two of them at the moment. Moving on to the next forward, it is Gabriel Jesus, ticking along very nicely. Everyone owns him, so you've kind of just got to have him within your team. Like I said, I am a little bit worried about the impact of the Odegaard injury with the Arsenal forward line, but very happy to have Jesus within the team. Moving on to the final forward, it is Ivan Tony. Back-to-back -back blanks for him, and a lot of people are shifting off him. Moving to Isaac from Newcastle. Uh, there's a few other players as well. Mitrovic, obviously, continuing his fine form and start to the season. So a lot of people kind of moving off Ivan Tony at the moment, but I think that's a little bit of a mistake. Projected to be the fifth highest forward among uh, projected points this game week hit the bar two games ago and had a few half chances against Palace Leeds always always concede Leeds Leeds don't keep clean sheets come on guys Brentford at home as well I am expecting uh, a Brentford win I think they've got a very good record as well Brentford um, still yet to have a penalty as well Ivan Tony. I think this this might be the week where because a lot of people have sold him he'll turn up um, I hope so for my own sake held him for a few weeks now Obviously a little bit disappointed with his back-to-back -back blanks, but he has showed signs of encouragement, so that is very good to see. Moving on to the bench, we do have Danny Ward finally making it where he belongs in just the scrapyard of this team. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long few game weeks. Uh, then the first sub, we've gone for Williams, who's uh, playing Bournemouth at home. Obviously, if any of the players don't play, be very happy if he comes on. Andreas has been absolutely amazing for Fulham. It looks like he's potentially going to get a price rise as well. Tottenham away for him, a little bit of a difficult one. And then my final player on the bench is Pedro Neto. I just can't get him out of my team at the moment. His value's dropped and there's no one really too appetizing for me that I'd potentially go for. Maybe Pascal Gross, but it's just no one uh, like amazing i think the transfer for me this week is dean henderson that just makes more sense it it means potentially as well i could get more points out of that back line which is definitely something that has been lacking for me over the past few game weeks that was my game week team game week six sorry team selection let me know what you think of the team let me know which way you're leaning towards captaincy i'm currently holding salah at the moment as my captain but if i get wind that harland is going to start then he definitely could easily take it if you did enjoy the content on the channel please like comment and subscribe if you need any help with your team leave it down in the comments below as i answer all questions down there thank you very much for watching and i hope you have a good game week